Hello, and thank you for joining us today to learn how to properly prepare and install your rain barrel using the Rain Recycle Rain Barrel Diverter Kit. My name is Amy Warnock, and I'm an Environmental Quality and Education Manager with Fulton County Public Works. Using a rain barrel at home has a lot of benefits, both for you as a homeowner and also for the environment. First of all, it's going to reduce the amount of potable water that you use outside your home, and that can take a big chunk out of your water bill. It's also better for your plants. Tap water is designed and monitored for the health and safety of human beings, but plants and humans have very different needs. Rainwater has a more acidic pH than tap water does, and plants tend to thrive in that while they don't have to worry about the contaminants that might be found in rainwater, like we might have to. Rain barrels also have added environmental benefits. For one thing, they slow the flow of stormwater runoff. That can help control erosion and also reduce the amount of pollution that enters our waterways through stormwater runoff. All right, before we get started installing our rain barrel, we're gonna walk you through real quick what's in your rain barrel kit, and then also what other tools you'll need to complete this job. So inside your kit, you're going to have a diverter, a fill hose, the corrugated fill hose. There'll be one rubber seal that has threads in it, and one rubber seal that has no threads these right here. There should be two screws in your kit. You'll also have one spigot, one sticker saying that the water's not drinkable, and then you'll have one set of hole saws. So this includes the drill bit and three saws. When you first look at it, it might look like only two pieces, but there are three in here. Now there are a few things that aren't included in your diverter kit that you'll need for installation. So it's helpful to have a level. You're also gonna need a ruler or measuring tape. You'll need a drill, a Phillips head screwdriver, and then of course anytime we're using tools, you're gonna want your work gloves and your safety goggles. It's also a good idea to download the printable instructions, installation instructions from our website. Now these barrels are functional, but as they come, they're not super fashionable. So before you start drilling your rain barrel, you might want to paint it. There's a couple of things you need to consider. Make sure that you choose a paint that's made to be outside and that will adhere to plastic. You also want to make sure that you scuff up your barrel a little bit with some sandpaper beforehand to help it stick. Another optional thing you can do to help you out is to add a strip of painter's tape all the way down the side of your barrel before you paint. When the paint dries, you can peel it off and then you'll have a water level gauge. Before you prepare your rain barrel for installation, and certainly before you drill any holes in it, it's important to select a site for your barrel. You want to select a site for your rain barrel based on the capacity of your barrel and also on what you plan to use the water from the rain barrel for. Try to put your barrel as close as possible to the flower beds, vegetable garden, or whatever it is that you're planning to use the water for on a regular basis. You also want to choose a downspout that has sufficient roof area to fill your barrel on a regular basis. If you use something like a garage or a storage shed, it may not fill your barrel as quickly as you'd like or keep it full as long. Make sure that your barrel is standing on a level surface. 
you may also want to build a base to elevate your barrel. Building a base to elevate your rain barrel will help in a couple of ways. It can increase the water pressure at the spigot. It also makes it easier to get a watering can or a bucket underneath the spigot to release the water, and it can help save your back as well. Now, when you build a base for your rain barrel, you can build it out of many things. You can build a base out of wood. You can use railroad ties, pavers, or cinder blocks. You wanna make sure of two things. One, that the ground beneath the base is level, that the base itself is level, and that the material is sturdy enough to hold your barrel. The barrel that you get from our rain barrel workshop is about 55 gallons. What that means is that when that barrel is full of water, it can weigh over 400 pounds. So you need to make sure that that base is gonna be sturdy enough to support it. What you do wanna make sure of is that you don't block with your barrel the outlet of your downspout. And if you need to, you can go ahead and install a downspout extender to move that water a little further away from your home. It is going to be important after your barrel's installed to check on it during that first rain to make sure that it's not leaking at any of your seals. If so, you may need to tighten some things up. It's also important to make sure that your barrel is located close enough to the downspout that your fill hose will reach without being stretched to the max. I do want to note that the printed instructions with your kit may say that your hose is three feet long and has a flat section in the middle that can be cut. Now, some of the kits do not actually have that. So this hose, for example, is actually two and a half feet long and does not have a cuttable section. So it's important to stretch your fill hose out and check that before you get started so you know how much space you have to work with. Now, this barrel is a closed top barrel and the kit that you'll be using includes a diverter. So what that means is that the diverter goes into the downspout and directs water into the rain barrel until it's full. Once the barrel is full, any excess rainwater will just continue down the downspout as normal. So what that means is you shouldn't have to worry about your barrel overflowing and causing erosion around your foundation as long as it's installed correctly. The first thing that you need to do is decide which side of your barrel is going to be the front. This is going to be more important if you've painted your barrel. So once you have your barrel front facing out, just go ahead and mark it with your marker on the rim. Once you've got the front of your barrel marked, the next thing you want to do is take your fill hose and hold it in place between the downspout and the barrel and mark on your barrel where the inlet will be. You wanna use a different mark than you used for the front spot so that you know which is which when you start to drill your holes. Now that you've got your barrel back in place, you can go ahead and mark your downspout in order to drill the hole for your diverter to go in. You're gonna use a level to do this because if the downspout outlet is too low, your barrel is not going to fill efficiently. So take your level, lay it across the top of your barrel, make sure it touches both sides and slide it over to the downspout. Now your downspout outlet can be anywhere at this level or above, as long as it's close enough for your fill hose to reach. So you wanna bring that hose back out and make sure that it will reach far enough for your spot. And then just go ahead and put a spot on your downspout right in the middle of where you want to drill. Now there's more than one size of downspout that you can find on a residential home. Some homes will have two inch by three inch downspouts and some will have three inch by four inch downspouts. No matter which downspout you have, you want your diverter to go into the three inch side. So if you need to measure that before you get started, go ahead and do that. Okay, so find the mark you made for the front of your barrel. Go down to the bottom, and you're gonna measure up about 10 inches from the bottom. Now on my barrel, 10 inches comes right 
at a seam here between this ridge and the rest of this flat part of the barrel. Now we don't want to drill right into that seam, so pick one or the other. Just go either a little below that 10 inches or a little above. That's fine. And then you're going to mark right in the middle of where you want your spigot to go. When you're ready to drill your barrel, it's a good idea to lay it down on its side and to have someone hold it at one end just to keep it steady while you work. So you're going to want to open up your hole saw set here and for this spigot hole we're going to use the smallest of the three. And then you'll need this drill bit piece as well. To attach the hole saw to your drill bit you're going to first unscrew this piece right here. Pull it off, take your hole saw and slide it over with the saw part going on first. The way that you can remember this is you want all of your pointy bits to be facing the same direction. And when you get done with that, just screw this back on. Now before we start drilling, we want to make sure we have our safety equipment, our work gloves and our safety goggles on. And when you drill, you're going to put this bit right where that center hole is and just move the drill slowly and steadily without forcing it. Now if when you pull the drill out, that small piece of plastic that was in the hole here falls into your barrel, that's okay. It can stay in there. It's not going to hurt anything. All right, now that we've got our spigot hole drilled in the front, we're gonna turn the barrel around to where you marked on the rim for your inlet hole. So find where you marked on the rim of your barrel for your inlet, measure down about three inches, and make a dot there for the center of your drill. Now in order to drill this hole for the inlet, we're gonna use the medium hole saw. So you need to go ahead and swap that out on your drill bit before you start drilling. Just like before, we've got the barrel laid over on its side. We're gonna drill straight down with slow, steady pressure and have someone steady that barrel for you. Once you've got that hole drilled for your spigot, you're going to want to find the threaded rubber seal, the one that has the threads in the center here, out of your diverter kit, and you're going to install it into this hole. Now, one way to do this is to squeeze it and put it in. You may be able to just slide it in. If it doesn't go in easily, get a little bit of soapy water and put it around the edge, and that will help it go in a little smoother. Now that you've got your seal in, check to make sure that it is flush with the barrel all the way around. And then you can go ahead and screw your spigot into those threads. So this piece that has the hex collar on it, that's gonna go up against the barrel. Go ahead and screw your spigot all the way in until this hex collar sits flush against the seal and the open part is pointing downward. Now, while rainwater is great for your plants, it's not potable water. It's not safe for humans to drink. So in your kit, you've got a sticker that says, do not drink the water. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and put that sticker on your barrel next to the spigot. If you've got children who live in your household, make sure that they understand that this faucet is not safe to drink from. Once you've got your inlet hole drilled, you're gonna find that unthreaded rubber seal from your kit. This is where the fill hose is going to go into coming from your downspout. So find that unthreaded seal. If you pinch it together, it will make it easier to put into the hole. And then just make sure that you've got it 
flush with the barrel. The last step in installing your rain barrel is going to be to drill the hole in your downspout for the outlet. Now, when you drill into your downspout, you can leave it in place. I'm just using this sample piece today to show you. Don't forget your diverter is going to go into the three inch side of your downspout. So for example, this downspout is four inches by three inches. So I'm gonna drill into the narrow side. If you have a two inch by three inch downspout, you're gonna to wanna to drill into the wider side. Now, since we're using our drill for this and we're gonna be drilling into metal, make sure that you've got your safety gloves and your safety goggles on. And for this, you're gonna use the largest of your hole saws. So the biggest of the three that came in your set. So go ahead and swap that out on your drill. You wanna locate the mark that you made when you were measuring and leveling your barrel and use that as the guide for the center bit on your hole saw. Once you've got that hole drilled, be careful with the edges because these can be a little sharp. So that's why we're wearing our gloves here. And the next step is going to be to insert the diverter. If you look at your diverter, you can see it's got a cup here around the edges. And that's what's gonna catch the rainwater as it falls down your downspout. So you wanna make sure that that's facing upward. In order to do that, it's really important that when you insert it, you push it straight in rather than turning it around so that it doesn't get turned sideways or upside down. The best way to do this is to pinch it together and then push it into the hole that you've made. Now to secure this in place, you're gonna use the two screws that came with your kit, and you're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver for that. These are self-tapping screws, so you shouldn't need to drill a pilot hole, but you can if you like, and then you can just go ahead and put the screws in there to hold this securely in place. Once you've got that outlet seal screwed securely into place, you're gonna take your corrugated fill hose from your kit you're gonna put one end into that inlet hole that you drilled in the back of your barrel, and the other end is gonna go right into your diverter here. Now remember, if you have a hard time inserting this hose, just put a little bit of soapy water around the edge, and that will help it slide in a little more easily. Once you've got your hose hooked up to your downspout and to your barrel, you're good to go. Thank you for joining us today to learn how to properly prepare and install your rain barrel. Now you're ready to get started on your own installation.